Hey everybody, welcome to the last episode of the B74.1D build series. In this episode, we're gonna talk about what the car looks like in stock form, weigh it, and talk about some upgrades that I'm gonna make for the 13.5 class. So the transmitter that I run pairs up really nicely with this receiver, which is the RX491 from Sanwa. And the servo that I like to run is this shorty servo. It's the PGS LH2. For the battery, I'm running the Protec 4600 milliamp hour, 120C. This is the, the LCG pack that they have. For the speed control, I'm running the Hobbywing XR10 Pro G2 Elite. And the Elite is just a, a fun way to say that it comes with 13 gauge wire instead of 12 gauge wire. One key feature that I liked about this speed control is it's got reverse polarity protection so if I mess up plugging in my leads, I can, I'm not gonna have a bad day. For the motor, as you can see, it's the Trinity RC Reptech X-Factor. This has got some upgrades on it. It's got the certified rotor in it, as well as the ceramic bearings. And you've seen the fan already. This is the Yaw Racing Tornado Plus. It's a 30 by 30 millimeter fan, and it's got an aluminum case on it. So I do run the MyLapse hybrid transponder that works at most tracks around the country. I also mounted up the ProLine shadows for the front and the rear, as well as the J Concepts wheels. As far as problems with the build, I only had a few. Um, one of the problems was the axle in the front had a little nub in the middle of it, so that was causing some binding issues i had to drill it out actually and that solved that problem also a user error when i was installing the center differential i broke the seal by accident when i was screwing it together and all the oil leaked out of it so that was a fun little thing to clean up Okay, so out of the box, without any titanium or lightening up the car, we're at 1,667. So we have a little bit of room to play around with. Not a ton, it is pretty light with the lightweight battery. Um, some people will run the, instead of running this speed control, they'll run the uh, Pro Stock one, which is considerably lighter than this one, especially if you have if you don't run the fan. Okay, so first up is some titanium parts. And I'm gonna be using these titanium motor screws. For all of the M3 lock nuts that are on the car, you can go with aluminum lock nuts and that will take away quite a bit. I think these are about half the weight of the normal lock nuts that come with the car. So I just bought these from Amazon and they've got a flange on them. And these are nice for like the shocks. And for titanium, I didn't buy a titanium kit, screw, screw kit for the car. Instead, uh, I pieced together a little bit of uh, kits from here and there. So started with the flatheads from Yokomo. So I've got a bunch of packs of these guys where these, I can start taking weight out of the bottom of the car. Um, the non-critical, like the motor mounts, for example, I'm not gonna replace, but the side guards there are good to go with these, as well as a few other areas on the car that have uh, flat head screws. And then for the button heads, um, I went with these iFlight screws, and you can get these also on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think they're less than 10 bucks a pack, and they come with 20 screws in each of them. So I've just bought an assorted set, and they, they will get me pretty far to where, where I need to be. I also have a bunch of leftover titanium screws from other kits so I can augment my titanium sets as needed. Okay, so you may have seen me using these little containers. These are these are just, uh, I think they're like makeup containers and they come in handy for organizing parts. So um, inside of this particular container are a set of J Concepts uh, wheel hexes and these lighten up just the drivetrain a little bit of the car and they're five millimeter. I ran them on my old 74 and they're gonna get converted over onto this car. And they're made out of aluminum. So I'm also gonna be running these guys. These are the Trinity 
wing buttons. This is more of a uh, aesthetic than anything. It just looks a little bit better than the plastic ones that come with the kit, I guess. As far as the shock standoffs go, um, I wanted something that was a little bit more wear friendly so I can replace these bushings if I needed to. And what this one is, is the J Concepts shock standoff and it's got aluminum uh, flanged M3 nut on the end of it. And then this one is the Lun Lunsford one. So these will go on the back and then these two will go in the front. So one cool thing I found from 175RC.com is their lower arm stud kit. And what that is, is a titanium screw without a head on it. Instead it's got a 1.5 millimeter hex. And then it comes with a flanged aluminum uh, M3 nut, lock nut. So you put those on the bottom rears for your shock mounts and then you don't strip strip that screw out when you're taking your shocks on and off all the time especially if if you replace that with a titanium screw it tends to strip out easier than a lock nut these are also some m3 lock nuts that i can put these don't have the flange on them so these are from 175rc.com also and I'll put these in a few spots on the car that are using lock nuts. So for the ball studs, I'm gonna go with the Avid Titanium Ball Stud Kit. And I'm recycling this from my old car <laughs> because it's the same ball stud kit. For the stock classes, you wanna have a drivetrain that's as free as possible. So I went ahead and bought the Speed Secrets ceramic bearings and this will replace all the bearings in the car, minus I think the, the steering bearings, which you don't want ceramic anyway. And they give you uh, some oil with them. That's kind of nice of them. And then the last thing is from RC Speed Secrets, their titanium turnbuckles. And you can kind of see they're matching the black setup on the rest of the car as well. I had to open these up and just take a look at what they look like. So the size of the turnbuckle is not the same as the J Concepts turnbuckle. So if you get these uh, and you have a turnbuckle wrench that, that works in the J Concepts one, it's not gonna work in these. But I think the stock turnbuckle wrench will work on them for adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to install these parts on the car and I'll come back to you and we'll weigh the car again and see how close we got to the 1613 magic number. All right, after some wrenching, here we are. We've got all the parts installed and uh, just quickly go through some of the things I noticed while installing them. First of all, these are the RC Speed Secrets turnbuckles and I do like how they look. I'm not a huge fan of needing to drill out the ball cup and getting it so it's not super tight on the car. I'd like to be able to adjust them without the ball cup popping off the ball stud. So I had that happen on pretty much all of them. I had to do some adjustments to make them uh, fit right on the car by boring out the ball cup a little bit more than, than uh, what they provided with the drill bit. So the RC Speed Secrets bearings are installed and I'm pretty happy with how free the car is right now. I expect it to free up even more once I run it a few times on the track. And just like the B74, I think that the drivetrain on the car is going to be very smooth and be pretty good for the stock class. One other thing I noticed when I was doing the install is I didn't buy enough screws to uh, fit the braces, so I need to pick up a few more. There's, there's a handful of steel screws still on the car that I'd like to replace. And then there are, of course, some steel screws that I'm not going to replace, so uh, the ones that are fitted against the arms and the trans transmission, drivetrain parts like the motor mounts, for example, 
those are going to remain steel and these other ones that are plastic those are all got replaced with titanium one thing I realized in the beginning of this video that I want to correct is I weighed the car without a body so let's go ahead and weigh the car the same way this time and then I'll put a body on it and we'll see what it weighs with the body and just see how close we are to the um, magic number So this body actually weighs quite a bit, so I'm pretty far over that 613 limit. And this is the lightweight body that came with the B74, and it weighs a little bit less uh, painted. So it's saving me a little bit of weight. Running the Shorty battery that's the low profile really helps a lot with this car to get it lower in weight. Also running the plastic gears and all the diffs saves you about 30 grams right there. Okay, so some final thoughts on the B74.1D versus the B74 car. If you have a B74 and it's in decent shape, I would say getting the lower shock towers and getting the, the lower shocks is probably your priority number one. There's not a whole lot else that has changed on the car other than the, the low roll center rear setup that is gonna be worth upgrading from a B74 to. The chassis did change a little bit. It's got some more holes in it and some, just some slight changes. And if you have already upgraded your steering on your B74, you should be good to go with the steering. I don't expect this car to steer much different. I am curious how the wider front will do compared to the old car. Some of the convenience things like the fan mount and the ESC tray are nice. I ended up taking the ESC tray out so I'm not even running it. First of all, my sensor wire uh, didn't quite reach my ESC with the tray in it. It's a pretty short wire and the tray itself weighs about eight and a half grams so I figured that was a good way to shave a little bit of weight. So that's going to do it for this build series. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button for more RC content. And we'll see you in the next video.